What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go over some basic math for understanding, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing positive as well as negative numbers. So let's go over a basic understanding of positive as well as negative numbers, as well as the way that I like to think about it. So when I need to apply operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, I can kind of understand exactly what I'm doing to make sure that my answer is going to be valid. There's really kind of two uh, trains of thought that I like to work with for positive and negative numbers. The first one is just understanding a number line, right? So you can see here, we have this horizontal number line. Numbers to the right are going to be positive and numbers to the left are going to be negative, basically meaning this would be the positive direction and this would be the negative direction, right? Where zero is going to be our neutral value. So when we're thinking about addition, right? Remember, we're thinking about combination. So if you have a negative three, you can go over from zero, negative three, so one, two, three, and then we're gonna go four units to the right, which would be in the positive direction. So we started at zero, we went to negative three, in the negative direction, and now we're gonna go four units to the right. So we'll go back one, two, three, four. And you can see we're gonna land on the number one. So negative three plus four is going to equal a positive one. Now, the way that I like to always think about this, and again, like when I'm teaching a class and you know something comes up like this and maybe students will maybe get confused or they'll make a mistake, I always like to think about positive and negative numbers, especially with adding and subtracting, of just like money. Think about negative as like money you owe me, and think about positive numbers as money you have in your pocket. So if you owe me $3, but you have $4, Right? If you actually give me my money that um, you have from the $4 um, that's already in your pocket, you're gonna be left with $1. All right, so now just to kind of add on to this, what if we have like a negative three plus a negative four, right? Thinking of the number scenario, it's like, all right, you owe me $3, but then you owe your friend $4. Now again, you don't have this money, right? There's no positive number, there's no positive money in your pocket. So if you owe one person $3 and you owe another person $4, that's technically you owing $7, right? So we're combining our two values, and if it's a negative plus a negative, it's still going to be, in this case, a negative. If you think about it on the number line, it's like going three units to the left, and then going another four more units to the left. All right, so now let's go and take a look at a subtraction. So again, we can look at this in terms from the number line as well as from a fund of money perspective. So in this case, you have $3, but now also you are borrowing two more dollars, right? So what I wanna think about with subtraction is like, again, you're in the process of taking away. Addition is that combination. It's the collection of those two elements. Whereas here, what you can think about this is like borrowing some more money. So if I have a negative three, right, I owe, let's say you owe me $3, and then you wanna take out another loan. You need to, hey, hey, I need two more dollars, right? So now it's like a negative two. So if you're at three, well, let's see, one, two, three. I don't know why, that's negative five supposed to be there. I messed that up. So if you're oh, at negative three, and then now you're going to borrow two more dollars, that's like, again, going more again to the left. So negative three minus two is going to equal a negative five. Now, one thing that I always like to tell students, and what's really important, especially when we're dealing with negative numbers, is we can always convert a subtraction problem to using addition. So I can rewrite this as a negative three plus a negative two. Because wouldn't you guys agree that's a negative two? So really, when we like addition more than like subtraction, we can realize that negative three plus negative two is the exact same thing here as negative five. I think it's a little bit easier to reason when we're dealing with a negative just like that or adding a negative rather than dealing with subtraction. However, sometimes we're gonna get subtracting a negative. All right, now again, here's where it kind of comes into, especially when we're dealing with the number line, if you think about this financially, it's kind of like weird, like you owe me $3 and then you borrow another two more dollars that you owe me. It's like, it starts to get a little bit more abstract, right? The real lesson or of owing money doesn't really make as much sense here. So what you can do is, again, think about this negative as like changing direction, right? So you owe me $3, but now you're gonna borrow another two more dollars in the opposite direction. So rather than thinking about at a positive and negative as like positive to the right, negative to the left, you can just think of negative as like reversing the direction, right? So if you're gonna subtract and now you owe me another two more dollars, you're actually gonna be going two more units to the right. So another way to kind of think about this is when you're changing directions twice, right? If I do a negative, changing direction, change direction, you can see that that's actually gonna be sometimes what we call canceling out. So minus a negative is just going to be a positive. So now we can really think about negative three minus a negative two. Negative three minus a negative two is really the same thing as just a negative three plus two, all right? So then this makes sense in the mathematical perspective. If I go negative three, like I owe me $3, but I have two more dollars in my pocket, oh, that's just going to be 
equal to a negative one. Okay. So now let's go and get into multiplication and division. Now in this first one, we have negative two times eight. Now again, remember, multiplication is just repeated addition, right? So you can think about this. If you have like this negative two, right? And you're gonna multiply it eight times. So let's say you owe me $2, but it's not just one person, it's eight of your friends, right? So therefore you can think about this. Well, you owe $2, you're gonna multiply that by eight of your friends. So therefore you're gonna owe now $16 technically, right? If you owe one person $2, but actually, you have eight of those people that are your friend group. Now that's gonna be a negative $16. Now what about if I had a negative two times a negative eight, right? So here's where it kind of gets, and again, that confusing with the financial way to understand things. But the easiest way I, I can say to think about this, if I have like a negative two, right? And I multiply that by eight or repeated addition, I'm just gonna keep on going in the exact same direction. But when you think about a negative as a reversing the direction, if I have a negative two times a negative eight, right? But I have a negative negative. So therefore, if I'm going in the negative direction, but this negative eight is going to reverse my direction. So I'm still going to get the value of 16, but it's actually going to be a positive, right? And that's where a lot of times we like to remember these rules. A negative times a positive is always going to be negative. A negative times a negative is always going to be positive, as well as a positive times a positive is always positive. All right, let's get into the last one, which is going to be division. And in this case, let's go and take a look at like, if I had like negative six divided by three. Now division, you can think about as grouping, right? How many times can you take this number and group it into groups of three? Or you could also think about it as repeated subtraction, all right? Now, in this case, let's say you have like an inheritance of, or you owe like negative six, but the, you have three children. So you need to break it up three different times. Well, hopefully you see that we can break negative six into three equal groups of negative two. So negative six divided by three is simply just going to be a negative two, right? And that you could also think about that as like repeated subtraction for in that case. But where it kind of gets a little bit confusing is when we start dealing with like a negative six divided by a negative three, or when we look at like a positive six divided by negative three. Like how do you break something up into negative groups, right? It kind of gets a little bit more tricky and a little bit more abstract. And so that's why a lot of times we just like to rely to make the math a little bit easier to digest or rely on the rules that we had for multiplication because the rules for multiplication also revert to the rules for division. So notice when I have a negative divided by a positive, that equals a negative. Well, guess what? A positive divided by negative is also going to be a negative. Just like we did for multiplication, it works true for division. Notice we're still doing the division with our numbers. It, the main thing we need to be able to determine is what is going to be the sign of that value. Now in this example, we have a negative divided by negative. Well, what was a negative times a negative? A negative times a negative was equal to a positive. So in this case, when you think about division, it's the exact same way. If I have a negative divided by negative, that's going to be positive, and that is going to be a positive too. So hopefully this basic little introduction for positive and negative numbers was helpful. If you're looking for some help with two-digit operations, that video is coming up next.